welcome back to Stewart Arts. I picked up a couple more duck pin bowling balls off eBay. Eight bucks for this pair, uh, plus shipping, and I even got this nifty bag here. Maybe the wife will carry it as a purse, I don't know. Yeah, hey, I got you a surprise. Oh, goody, what'd you get, what'd you get? I got you a purse. Oh, yay, thank you. Uh, so in this video, I'm, I'm a little more brief about the process for doing this because I have another video where I turned a green duck pin bowling ball and I go over the process for that project in much more detail. So I'll include a link uh, with this video in case you want to see that. And uh, in any case, I hope you enjoy this project and I can't wait to uh, do another project on this because dang, this is really pretty stuff. I believe these balls were made in the 1940s or 1950s, and I don't know what this material is. I thought it might be a, like a urethane resin or something like that. Whatever it is, as soon as you put a tool to it, uh, it will put off a, a pretty uh, pungent chemical odor. And it also uh, will put off a dust uh, that will get everywhere and it will be flying all over. So this project, I did this outdoors. I took my lathe outside in the open air. And the entire time uh, I did this work, I was wearing this 3M carbon filter mask here to protect my, my uh, lungs. So with that, uh, let's have a look at the project. Here I'm center drilling the ball uh, to accept a quarter 20 drawbar. And there's a bit of a trick to finding the center of the sphere. And I cover that in some detail in the first project video. So be sure and check that out if you'd like to see my method. Here I'm mounting the ball uh, onto the draw bar, and uh, I'll use a piece of area rug non-slip fabric. Uh, this prevents the ball from spinning once I get it tightened down. Go three, two, one, clear, and very good. That's got very little run out to it. It might be a 64th or a 32nd, but that's pretty darn good for something like this. I'm using a centering bit here to make a registration point for my live center, and I will turn the ball on the live center as much as I can for safety reasons. The ball is uh, split into three sections, and I'm using my parting tools for that. Uh, the parting operation is very tough on the tools. Uh, there's a lot of heat that builds up on the plastic, and it dulls the tools pretty quickly, so I was surprised at the number of times I had to sharpen my parting tools during this evolution. I think that the cutting operation with the parting tools would have gone much better if I could have reduced the speed. Uh, the plastic will cut at lower speeds. Unfortunately, the speed controller on my Delta MIDI has failed. And so I only had the three belt speeds uh, to select here. So I'm on the lowest belt speed. Uh, but it produces a lot of heat and it's hard to get a good chip going at, uh, at that speed. The center part of the ball is going to be just like turning a bowl. So here I'm using a, a skew as a negative rake scraper and I'm creating a mortise so that I can flip this thing around and mount it on my Nova chuck. Before I flip this to hollow it, I'm doing a little detailing on the bottom and I've gone to a round carbide and this round carbide is really the tool I use to do all the shaping, forming, and hollowing. Uh, if you lean into it, you can get a pretty good chip and not a lot of heat buildup uh, on the piece. Now that I've got a mortise on the ball, I can remove this piece of quarter 20 all thread from the ball and I can flip it around and mount it on the Nova G3 chuck. I've got 50 millimeter jaws and because the plastic is so strong I can really get a secure mount here. Here I'm taking the opportunity to shape the lid and the base uh, so I can see the two pieces together. So just uh, doing a little trimming uh, with the round carbide tool. And there's my top. And uh, just starting the hollowing with the Forstner bit. And you get some really nice chips uh, from the Forstner on this. 
Now, for the carbide, I have to lean into this tool pretty good, but once you put some force on there, you can get a really nice chip going. And uh, the hollowing really didn't take that long. It maybe took me 15 minutes or so. But boy, what a mess it makes. Can't believe <laughs> the volume of chips that I got out of this, uh, this bowl. I'm pretty happy with the basic form of this, so I just do some final trimming here uh, so that the base uh, has the right fit with the top that I'm looking for. And I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so now I'll remove the bowl portion of this, set it aside, and turn the lid before I get to wet sanding. The wet sanding process is really perfect for this plastic. Here I'm using a 120 grit sponge to get the tool marks out and they do come out pretty quickly uh, with this wet sanding. And I went up in grits uh, just in four or five steps up to about a 4,000 grit. I love how the pattern of this ball is all the way inside of it. It goes all the way through. The other one I did was a solid color on the inside. This one, the swirls go all the way to the center. So how could I not be happy uh, with this? This was a ball that was well used in the alleys, and so it's got a lot of nicks and dings on it. Uh, I didn't try to get those out. I thought they kind of added to it and uh, helped tell a little bit of a story about the history of this thing. Yeah, I've gone through the grits. I'm down to my 4,000 here. Looking good. All right, let's put some wax on it. Just a thin coat. And be ready to buff this thing. All right, here's what the day has been leading up to. Oh yeah, I can see <laughs> it's already starting to pop. Oh lordy, that is so nice. It looks like a like an old marble or something and it's a plastic bowling ball how about that boy the bottom is the prettiest part and left a little inset right there so that i could put a logo on there a friend of mine brought me a big chunk of white corian from a kitchen remodel and uh that turned out to be like the perfect material to make this little bowling pin out of i turned it at high speed on my midi lathe and then I cut a couple grooves and painted some acrylic stripes. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll leave me a comment and a like and become a subscriber if you're not already a member of the Stewart Arts Club. Have a great day.